Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Desiree Goliath, and I represent Community Chest. It is always an honor to welcome you to our building or to any of our events, wherever we may be. But today, it's a particular honor because this is quite a milestone, quite a groundbreaking event for a partnership, for community development, and for the greater society, as far as I can tell. It's here. What we're doing today is making the world a better place. We have a lot to go through, so I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible. Just to announce that the theme today is literally we're celebrating. This is a celebration, and we're celebrating the professionalization of the NGO sector. You are here as students of the Higher Certificate in Community Development. That is the first of its kind. Please give yourselves a round of applause. And remember, in the spirit of celebration, that is what we're going to do. We're going to honor, we're going to celebrate, we're going to lift you up high, and we're going to lift our partners up high who have walked this journey with us. But before we begin, we just want to observe a moment of silence, and that's nothing about people passed on, if that is what you choose. It's just to reflect, to take a moment, and to reflect whatever faith you believe in, to do your prayer, just a moment of silence for a short, short while. Let's do that. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that has put you in the mood, at peace, for what's lying ahead, because it's really, really impressive. I'm going to go right into the, the program, because as I said, it's quite a lengthy program, and we want to run through it as quickly as possible. I'm going to call up our program director at Community Chest, Ms. Do Joan Durries, and she's going to speak to you a bit about the journey. And the journey is from the short courses that we did in, in capacity building, to the formal accreditation. Joan Durries. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And, um, and we have a number of honored guests here. We've got um, people from academia here. We have our CEO here. We have all our new students here who are now firmly tertiary students, um, learning incredible things, learning how to write academic papers. So we have a lot of very important people in the room. And I'm so grateful to be able to be here just to talk about the journey that has brought us um, thus far. Now, I know to the group in your orientation week, you, le you, 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 you heard me give the long version. Tonight, I'm going to give the short version of, of the journey that we have come. For some of you, you do know that Community Chest in 1996 had its first capacity building workshop, and it happened in a garage in Guguletu. And the purpose of this workshop was, it, was to make it possible for community organizations to access funding from Community Chest. Um, so, so that was the humble beginnings where, where this um, project started. And since then, over the years, we have, I just looked through some of the data um, for our capacity building training. On average, um, at the beginning, we were graduating 700, 800 um, participants from community organizations organizations in our capacity building program. And um, we used to, uh, sometimes people were doing all our, all our courses in one year. So at graduation, they would get a certificate for this, that, the other, and the other, and the other. And we started saying, goodness me, we should start graduating these people with bachelor's degrees in our, in our courses. And while that was, uh, it was a bit of, um, a, bit of a joke, it remained a very, very serious concern for us that we that we had people coming through our training workshops so eager to learn, so eager to study, so eager to know more, um, and and what we were giving them were certificates that in the end were not really amounting to much in terms of offering people an opportunity for progression into, um, into pathways where they could really present themselves as professionals in, in, the, in the industry. So from those humble beginnings, we can say the rest is almost history. 
because we built up this curriculum of over 13 uh, different courses, and this we regard as foundational, foundational courses. And when Lorenzo joined us as our CEO, he started making us think a lot more deeply about what we were doing in terms of our capacity um, building training uh, course. So even though we are very proud of the history that we had in building capability and capacity in communities, it was never enough, because we could still see that NGOs remained vulnerable, they were not sustainable, they were not taking their rightful role as, as full partners in development, influencing development agendas in the country, and we, we realized that we needed to do more. And our CEO conceptualized of something that, wait for it, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it, it says a whole lot. He conceptualized this creature called a Community Development Leadership Academy, a Community Chest Leadership Academy for the development of capacity, empowerment, shared value, and the advancement of social innovation and social cohesion. Now that is a mouthful, but it was, it's what, it's what brought us into thinking um, of how broad we should be making our vision in terms of, of what is needed in, in communities, what we need in civil society to, to reactivate civil society um, again. Um, in our orientation, I told you the story about, you know, I was a child of the struggle. So we can, you know, when you have people of my generation telling stories about young people and what, and what they did in communities, it will make your hair stand on end. I was a teacher during that time, and my main concern as a teacher at, at some times was, how do I get my children through this day safely? When they were marching and facing Caspers and facing guns with real bullets, you know, those were, though, that was the level of, of, of participation participation that young people had um, in the future of this country. And today we see that energy all depleted and we feel overwhelmed by the problems, we feel overwhelmed by the, the scope of corruption. And we see this leadership academy, um, which is not a building, it's a concept that is agile, it works with partners. We do foundational phase training. We have partners like Cornerstone and other and other entities joining along with us in this in this leadership acad academy entity, which can respond to people's needs, which we can lead in some parts, others lead in other parts, but we all bring it together in the name of that of that academy. So today we are making more than history because a few a few uh, two years ago, we started the partnership with Cornerstone for the, for the honors degree in community development. But there was that missing gap, that intermediate gap that could make that accessible, that advanced degree accessible to community organizations. And this is it. It's this certificate, this higher certificate, that we are offering um, our first core of, of 30 students, an opportunity to create a pathway for advanced qualifications in, uh, com in community development. So we are very proud of this moment. It's a very, very special moment for us. And we hope that, um, the, that the students who are here that, and they're sending organizations, because this is a very, this is a complex relationship. And Community Chest is also a sending organization because we have two staff members um, on the course too. So we know the sacrifice that organizations are having to make to know to, to fill that gap when you are in class. So we feel it with you. We understand the arrangements that have to be made to enable you to, to do the, the, the studies. But we know that the that the 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 return on the investment is going to be way beyond our imaginings. And um, we are very pleased to have, to have you here, and we wish you well on your journey as, as students uh, on, an, on a step towards becoming advanced professionals, professionals in community development. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for sketching that journey. And so you see, you are here today as part of a process. It's a journey that has made that had many steps along the way, and you are the culmination of it, and you are continuing on that journey. Joan also mentioned the partners, because that's the great thing about what today is. 
So for, from Community Chest, as one of the partners, we would like to welcome particularly Cornerstone. We'd like to welcome the National Lotteries. And also we'd obviously wel welcome our students and their organizations. And the next person I'm going to call up is a representative for, of Cornerstone. She's going to speak on the expanding or expanding the community development academic footprint. So it'll be a continuation of Joan's uh, speech. And uh, she is a board member at Cornerstone, Ms. Nebakazi Munukwala, please. Good afternoon. Nebakazi Munukwala. I sit on the board for Cornerstone and I'm also an academic out at Stellenbosch University. I'm a musician and I participate in my community. At Cornerstone, we are very proud of this moment where we will have what uh, Joan has referred to as the bridging gap. In everything that we do, we come out of our homes with the talent, we come out of our homes with the benevolence. And a lot that has happened in our community has been based on benevolence. It's been based on our story, who we are as South Africans, but also who we want to be as South Africans in the developing state. At Cornerstone, we talk about learning to change the world. And such a course that we launched today is really about that. How do we change the world? How do we professionalize? There are people in this room who know about caregivers people who go and visit people in their homes, who've got TB, who've got HIV, the real things that keep us slow in this country. So it is important that we start to craft the industries that we serious about, the industries that affect us. And with such a program, we start to commune. I want to really emphasize this idea of community and benevolence and changing in the developing state to be about communing. In music, we use a lot of things and we say to people, we're gonna give you a marimba band, we're gonna go and play strings, we're gonna be exposed to this and the other. But at the end of the day, we know that people themselves, they make music together. And in these traits and these values that you will learn in this, obviously a value-driven curriculum is something that you will share with the rest of the country. And I hope you do get to share it. And I hope that you stay believing because it's not an easy sector. It's not easy for social workers. It's not easy for teachers in our classrooms because it's not easy at home. And for us to change those, we need to take these daily steps like the caregivers who go and give hope to the sick. It is something that is so important to us as a community and as a country right now. If we want to see change, it must be everyday small steps. Don't think what you are doing is very small. You are a voice for the silent, people who cannot even help themselves the vulnerable, the children, the women. You are that voice. You are professionalizing. 10 years from now, we want to see a professional body that gives accreditation. This is what it means to decolonize and be new. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Lorenzo, for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nebakazi, um, for your words of wisdom, but for also sharing them in that beautiful voice of yours. When you said you were a musician, may I ask you, do you sing as well? I won't put you on the spot. Beautiful. I wish we could hear you singing because your speaking voice is also quite incredible. Thank you very, very much for your encouragement. I'm now going to hand over to the main stars of the day, the course director, and the students. The next order of business is the introduction of the higher certificate students. And for that, I call up Ms. Renee Nguenya. She is the program coordinator for the higher certificate in community development, Ms. Nguenya. Good afternoon to you all. I will now introduce to you the 30 students. Um, two of them are not with us uh, for today.
Um, one is in Mossel Bay, and the other one is just not feeling well. Um, so when I call your name, I'm going to ask you just to stand. So I'll introduce your name and your organization, and I'll ask you to stand. And perhaps if we can wait till at the end, then we'll do the, the formal applause. Brendan Alois from Amakaya. Wendy Arensa from Caring Network in Bishop Labors. Wendy, just turn around also, people can see you. Nicolette Asher Pedro from The Big Issue. Cherise Ashore from Katalelana in Delft. Nomatansanka Buddha. YMCA Cape Town. Chantal Kluter from Gold Youth in Cape Town. Okay. Claudia Kogel from Fountain House, part of the Cape Mental Health. Morida da Costa, Carl de Tweet Center for the Deaf Children, they near Tigerberg Hospital in Peru. Lynette Debrain Davids from Soul Food Community Organization in Grabo. Vicky Lee Gelderbloom. Vicky, yeah, yet? Yes. Vicky, if you turn around. From the Lighthouse Community Services. Latifa Jacobs from Palisa Abafasi Betu. <laughs> Babalwa Katina from Community Chest. <laughs> Jonathan Stradom from St. Luigi's Crossopi Care Center, all the way from Oatswan. Kenneth Swart from the Women of Destiny in Christ, and he's from Mossel Bay. Kenneth, that was such a quick introduction. <laughs> Just so quick. Nosipo Tandeki from Etafeni Daycare Center. Nino Arensa from Thinking Empire for Kids. Yanga Manyakanyaka from the Primary Science Program. Temba Sizani, Temba Yayet, yes, from I Am Passion. Apiwe Tsetsa from Waves for Change. This is a surfer. <laughs> Hokutle Kuberg from Gold Youth Cape Town. Blanche McCarthy from EVE, it's, it stands for Evolutionary Visionary Empowerment. Pumza Mklonyana from Connect Network. Nomabaka Ntwazi from Sikula Sonke. Gloria Mgwenge from So Assistance. Tamsanka Nkwenkwezi from Violence Prevention and Urban Upgrade, VPUU. Lona Nobule, Lona Nobula from YMCA. Tembisa Sishube from Community Chest. <laughs> No Ludwe Scotty from VPUU. I think I've covered all the students. Have I covered all of you? Yes. Could you just stand for us? Thank you.
I'm now going to ask the sending organizations um, just to introduce yourself. And the way that we're going to ask you to do it is just to stand up where you are and perhaps just if you could um, just mention your name and the organization that you represent. Unfortunately, not all the sending organization representatives could make it for today. Um, who would like to start? So the sending organizations, yes. Hi, everyone. Afternoon. My name is Brenda. My name is Kontuana. I'm representing um, Eta Femideke Center Trust that is based in Nyanga. Thank you. I'm Isabella Kuti. I'm from the Care Network and I'm the program manager. So we are in Kailicha, Side B, Bishop Leila, and Kraken Bank. Hi, uh, my name is Robin. I'm from Wave for Change. Very proud to be here today and also very grateful for all the input of Community Chess for all the years. Thank you. Mr. Calderblock, love the light out for the good service. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Dave Uka. I'm School of Social Education Development. I'm the Executive Director. We are based in Cairo. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jimmy Ferreira from South Guys, you don't realize how important this moment is. You guys are pioneers in this field. You guys are the first batch of students who are going to take the sector to a professional level like it's never seen before. So welcome on board. And I want to give yourselves, give yourselves, and we're going to give you another huge round of applause. This is a big deal. I'm not even intimately involved in the program, but I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I really, really am. I've been involved in some of the fundraising courses that, was, that we run as part of our CBT training. So I know a few of, of you, your faces here. And I know the passion and the commitment with which you work when you do the courses with us. So I know you're going to bring that same passion and that same commitment to this course. Because this is going to be a little bit... <laughs> so you need to really hang in there and just believe. And to the sending organization, thank you very, very much. But know that your people are going to need help. They're going to need help. They're going to need, not just in time off, but maybe they're going to actually need help with the work that they do. Because this is an academic level, which is pretty tough at times. And if I look at Renee, I know that she can be quite a toughie. <laughs> so we understand that it's not going to be plain sailing, but everybody, I know Community Chess certainly is behind our two bright shining stars. <laughs> and I hope that all the other sending organizations will be too. You are planning your future and it starts today. My next um, welcome to the podium is our CEO. And our CEO has been on a, an extended break. He's been on sabbatical. So we've missed him terribly. I have to say, so he's right here. <laughs> but it's very, very good to have him back. And he's such a visionary in terms of driving this forward. So welcome, Lorenzo Davids. Please come up to the podium, and Lorenzo is going to be speaking on pointers for professionalization of community development. We're so glad to have you back. Hello, Noel. Mr. Daniels, I should say, on an occasion such as this. All the distinguished guests, Mr. Daniels, his colleagues, Madam from the board, Ms. Nguenia, Dr. Bass, and other cornerstone uh, distinguished guests. It's great to have you with us, um, colleagues in the field, and uh, friends and family that are here today to, to recognize and celebrate at this moment. And you know it's nice to see you too. Um, 
the, the, the process that has brought us here is indeed a process, as Joan said, that has come over, over many years. There's a wonderful quote that I often quote, um, which says, jump and the net will appear. It's a quote made famous by a man called John Burroughs, who was a naturalist. And it often is true in development. You don't have the space to do all the R&D you want to do and to plan succinctly so that you know what your risks are and what your benefits are. You often have to jump and hope that when you make that leap, when you take that risk, that the net will appear. And certainly today is another one of those moments in the life of Community Chest and Cornerstone in our collective journey to build a safe and prosperous democracy that we take the risk we take. Because these risks are not about us, it's about the future generations that will come and benefit from the risks that we are willing to take in our democracy to build a safe and sustainable and peaceful society and a society that, that advocates for social justice. And so, uh, and so, so in, 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 in this journey towards um, professionalization, we recognize today that our country is bereft of sectors of our society that have no pathway to professionalization. If you ever think that the person who works in your home will find it very hard to get a degree to do that kind of work, and a society that keeps diminishing the qualitative nature of the work that it produces and provides no pathway to add qualitative value to the work that's being done remains a society that diminishes the value of its citizens. We have to find pathways so that individuals, no matter what career they are in, what chosen field they wish to pursue, that there is an opportunity at some point along that pathway to professionalize it so that they can earn more, so that they can participate at a higher level, and so that they are able to contribute back to the process of refining that particular professional orientation. And so, and so this time to professionalize has come uh, at, at a most opportune moment. For years, organizations such as the NSCCW and others have advocated, for example, for a uh, qualification for childcare workers. And we have battled that process for years. Universities have said yes and then they say no because other sectors have objected to childcare workers in children's homes and in childcare centers being professionalized, having the same qualification that is just, just below a social worker. And the whole industry re revolted against that. And, and how do we take these thousands of individuals working in the sector with children who, who struggle to get a qualification that, uh, that hinders them from earning more and being safer and providing for their own families? in a way. And so this pathway to professionalization is, is in many ways a social justice quest, Mr. Daniels. It's, a, it's about making sure that, that in, my, in my given profession, I'm able to go as far as humanly possible. And there is no impediment to me ensuring that I'm able to do so, that I'm able to earn a degree for my field. I'm able to get a postgraduate qualification for my field. I'm able to get a certificate in this course that I'm doing. And, and so this is this notion today that, that we are professionalizing a sector of our economy and a sector of our, of our labor force is a, is a big step forward. I was at a, a workshop last week and um, a guy called Professor uh, Warren Nielsen from the UCT GSB made a wonderful comment and he said these words and I quote him, he says, imperfection creates a better invitation to engage than perfection does. Imperfection creates a better opportunity to engage or invitation to engage than perfection does. Because it is in our vulnerability that we are far more comfortable. If I have to act like I have, you know, 12 degrees and I know exactly what I must say every time I'm on stage and I, I have it all together, it de deters people. It, it pushes them away. But if we collectively are on this journey of growing together in our own imperfect way, we begin to invite others uh, with their imperfections to feel safe and to begin to grow with those imperfections into more perfect spaces. And so, and so in this particular journey of ours, this field that we are choosing, community development, I want you to understand that you own this field. There are people who write PhDs and master's degrees about the field but often you are their data sources. 
And that's a thing that in the biggest scheme of the dialogue in academia, we, we undervalue that, that you possess the data that many are writing postgraduate papers on. And as the owners of that data, you have to understand that that makes you an invaluable resource. You have to understand what you possess today. You've worked in the field. You've worked with young people. You've lived in neighborhoods. You understand. You've engaged. You've written some stuff yourself. That's the stuff that researchers are looking for. And you own it. You own that. And as you journey on this particular pathway to professionalization, you must bring all that data. And here's the thing you got to do. Don't tell yourself you have nothing to offer. You have the data that researchers are looking for. And you have to become comfortable with owning that space. You're stepping in and you say, oh, I've worked in childcare. I know what childcare is like in Grabo, or I know what childcare is like in, in, in uh, Somerset West. Uh, it's those kinds of stories because un unless you see that, you're going to miss something big. You're going to keep thinking that you don't belong. You, 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 don't, you don't have anything to give. In fact, I was at the same thing I was at last week. One of the researchers got up and said, he was asked a question by the group. So we know what you wanted from them, y you know, in terms of you wanted to get data from them and and, uh, you know, how they helped you. But, but, but the question that was asked of him is, what did, what did you learn from them? The researcher was asked this question. What did you learn from them, the subject matter in a given area in one of our townships? And, and he was bold enough to get up and say, I learned nothing from them. And I thought how, how, how problematic we've become in that we are simply taking material into the academic space and the participants have no asset value in that journey. And I hope that through Cornerstone, our chosen partner in this process and the National Lottery, we can begin to value the data, value the asset, value the community, value the story and build this value chain that collectively calls for a better society. And, and so I, I encourage you to write. If you're uncomfortable with writing, write one sentence, but start writing. Write four words, and then begin to write more, but keep writing. Because it doesn't have to sound professional or academic. It has to be what we call ethnographic. It has to be your own story. It has to be in your own words. It has to be the way you speak. And if you can't write, do a WhatsApp note and record it. And somebody else will, will type it out for you. But become comfortable in just telling your story. I will tell you this, and you, you, there, there's Dr. Bates and here's uh, Mr. Daniels and others who have all done postgraduate work. There are people out there looking for those stories. And you sit with them, and you have to record them and make sure that you build with that. So write what you see, write what you hear, write what you observe, write what you live with, write who you are. And so in closing, I want to, to say to all of you, we place an enormous value, not on the end result of a higher certificate, but on the entire process, every facet of this journey. Every part of this has value. And it begins with your story, your data, your information that you carry, because that's the foundation of good research. Comes from authentic data that is mined in communities such as yours that builds a successful academic program but also a more prosperous society. At the end of our lives, we want to be able to look back 20 years from now, 30 years from now, and know that there is a, there is a body of knowledge that has been built up, that is powerful, and, and begins to shape the dialogues around what government does as policy. What, what civil society does is practice, that is this body of knowledge that Cornerstone has developed. And, and we mustn't diminish that. And so I hope we'll get into the regular practice of, of writing your short stories, that weekly there's a sentence you publish, 
And it's your first book. And it's all about one sentence. Because that's how we begin to celebrate the stuff that makes for a great society. It's when we can value the publication of your first book. But also when we can value the publication of your first sentence. That's the kind of world we are building here with Cornerstone and the kind of world we want to live in. Thank you very much. Wonderful words, as always, from Lorenzo Davids, our CEO. Now you know why we missed him. <laughs> but also, it's a, it's a call to action. It's a call to action to your students. It's a call to action to do, not just to study, not just to be reading, but to actually do, put the stuff in, in writing, go out there, make it happen. It's, it's literally that, it's, it's, it's about action. Academic pursuit is not just about sitting in a classroom and learning and reading, it's about making a difference. So Lorenza has challenged you as well. So I'm sure, looking around this room, I know there are people who will be able to take up the challenge. And if it's a little bit scary, that's okay. Ask people who have been there, ask people for help. You are surrounded by them. Cornerstone has a wealth of academic knowledge. They will help you. Dr. Bass is a published author. He will help you. You know, all of us will be able to help you in one way or the other. So please reach out and answer that call. Okay. So in terms of academic contribution towards the professionalism and professionalization, I now call upon the published author of the book, <laughs> Dr. Reverend Rudy Bass from the Cornerstone Institute. He's Executive Dean and is Dean of Humanities at Cornerstone. And can I give it a plug? His book is called Brugbouwers. <laughs> Well, Dave, thank you. Um, to Lorenzo and Noel and Miss Koniwe from where? Ah, I see, we came up with the elevator together. Now I know. Yeah, so, um, and to the sending organizations, thank you very much. It is such a privilege to be part of this movement. I thought what would be a family or would we be but I think it's a movement. So thank you very, very much. I had a tough time this morning. We had a terrible time at home when, before I left uh, for work. And the whole demokarspel, the whole crazy time, was simply about me finding a tie <laughs> and getting the tie to wear. I have forgotten how to tie a tie. So we had to find the tie first, and then, you know, you know Karen, my wife, had to try and help me to do it. It was a terrible thing. Why I have a tie is because of the significant moment. And we might well be underestimating that. And, you know, big movements in our country started with small meetings everywhere. And so this is one such meeting. And I'm under that impression. I know we all are. So thank you for, thank you for that. So in terms of an academic positioning, if you will, which I'm to speak to. Now, the students, you will remember, we have spoken somewhat about this at our orientation and so. But just to give you an idea, who's Cornerstone? Because when you join an academic community, and I must say, I put it in brackets, what do you call it, Ismos, or what do you call these things? Inverted commas, thank you. Um, because academic often sounds, in our context, like hierarchy, right? It sounds like some would be academics and some are not and so forth. Now, we're not in that school of thought. We're not there. We're sort of in the Paulo Freirian school of thought where people drive their own knowledge. You arrive at campus or in the class not because you want to know stuff. It is because you know stuff and we share what we know and so learn from one another. So to, to go to a program at Cornerstone is not to go and sit in class and see the presentation and know new things. You will discover new things, of course, but because you engage with, you know, conversations of knowledge around community development and sociology and how societies function, that's been going on for quite a few <laughs> decades, if not centuries. But the point is not that some know and some don't. We all know differently. It's important to get that's who we are. And that means what we expect of our students and of our staff of me, of Noel, and everyone else, 
is not to arrive knowing, but to arrive unknowing, wanting to discover, wanting to learn more. That's the one thing I wanted to say. The second thing I think is important to know is that if I may claim it, at least for myself, we stand in the tradition of a Neville Alexander, which means we intentionally want to break down the notion of theory and practice. And theory being more and belongs to some of us, and the practice belongs to others who are less in some other way. So it's the class system of knowledge. I think it's important to say that, and you've referred to that somehow. But that's really real for us at Cornerstone. Our attempt is, and sometimes we don't succeed, and sometimes we succeed better than other times, but our attempt is to deconstruct that. And that's why we're a social justice institution. You know, that's our commitment. So now how we engage in class and learning and assessments, you'll know you'll have to perform because we need you to disrupt all of those legacies that we have. I mean, those legacies are across the world, but in reality, we want to break down that. So please arrive, knowing and unknowing, you know, but holding your voice. And so maybe if we talk about those most vulnerable, it's about that exercise of voice as you've, as you've raised. So just to say, and lastly, um, I think what makes you significant as a group of people that we engage differently in our program here is because you have been and you will become more of translators of people's lives. So I really appreciate the call to storytelling from Lorenzo's, from Lorenzo's uh, side, is that you have been translating what people experience and live with every day in such a way that they themselves can change things. So much more than knowing stuff and unknowing stuff, it's really understanding and learning how to translate your own sort of experience and the experience of others, you know, to improve life. It's easy as that. We want people to be happy, to live meaningful lives. It's not, you know, it's not grand rocket science. We want people to live good lives. And so we change the society to achieve that. And we change one another to achieve that. So the call to action that I add from an academic perspective is the challenge to try and name the world to change it. And that's why this certificate is so critical for us. It's at the moment one of our best programs to illustrate our commitment in terms of knowledge and learning is very close to where people live. We name what we see, we reflect on it, we read it, and then we change it. So the praxis idea, you'll, you'll recognize it. But that's who we are, and that's who we want to join and partner with you in who you become. And of course, the more you become, the more you change us, you change me. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to happen. So congratulations to Community Chest, to Cornerstone, if I may to the national lotteries and to US students, the sending organizations and the students. This is really such a wonderful thing. So thank you very much and I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Reverend Bass. <laughs> Just Rudy. But again, Rudy's told you now that it's about action. It's again about that. It's not just about passive learning. That's not what you're doing now. You're not kids fresh out of school. Even kids fresh out of school shouldn't just come. They know a lot already. But you have worked in the field. You've had experience. You've gained knowledge. You've gained skills. Bring that with. Teach as well as just learn. Again, it's call to action. It's about action. It's not about passiv passiv passivity. So there you have it. I am now going to call on the CEO of the Cornerstone Institute to wish the students well. I think everybody's done that, but just in your official capacity, Mr. Noel Daniels and Ms. Babalwa Guniwe, who is the client liaison supervisor of the National Lotteries Commission. Please won't you come forward? Hmm? Sorry? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you want to go? You want Guniwe? Would you like to come up first? Noel is being a gentleman. <laughs> ah, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is 
Baba Luakoniwe, uh, I'm a client liaison supervisor for NLC. And I just want to say some few words. I'm not a good speaker, it's my first time, but then yeah. Um, to be honest, I'm so emotional um, for the experience that I'm just seeing it now. And uh, it never came to me and to my mind in actual fact that we can uh, see the positive results in terms of funding the organization. Yes, our mission is that to fund the organizations, that is NPOs, NPCs, trustees, for impact, but that I can see the positive impact now. And having said that, it, it brought me back to one of the statements that was used by our um, president of the country in South Africa, Mr. President Cyril Ramaphosa, when he, sen when he said that Tumamina, now, um, by saying those words, it means send me. Now, that means that uh, for the students who acquired the, the course, the qualifications, uh, you've just, um, you know, uh, take as if like you are saying to the nation that I'm here, send me to change uh, our nation all over the country, that is South Africa. By now, as you can see on our media, there's a lot of things that is happening. There's poverty, you name them. But then I believe so that you guys, you will make an impact in terms of acquiring the knowledge that you've acquired now. Having said that, um, I'm so overwhelmed, you know, and I just want to say to you guys that keep on pressing and don't give up. Yes, there will be challenges. It's not but that everything is gonna go well and you won't uh, face with the challenges. You will face, you will be faced with the challenges, but then it's up, and up to you to take the key, the knowledge, and use it, you know, uh, in terms of uh, changing our nation. And having said that, good luck, and uh, I'm, I'm just uh, submitting my good wishes to you guys on on behalf of uh, National Lotteries Commission. And more so, um, we are here to serve you guys. And uh, whatever that you might come across with, if you find any challenges, NLC is there for you. Uh, our doors are open to assist you guys as we have assisted uh, Community Chest in terms of finding them. So by saying those words, um, I'm so humble and yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. I want to say, I see you. I want to say, Sawubona. When your names were being called out, one by one, for me, I want to congratulate the organizers of this program to put each of the individuals that are participating in this program on a pedestal. Because I believe that's where you're supposed to be. Because you truly, you truly are the champions. You truly the future. You truly what we're hoping for, for a better life for everybody. So everybody that you're going to touch out there you are going to make a difference. And you are going to be rewarded. Lorenzo said it's about the journey. It's about the process. It's what you do every day. But I look forward to when your names are called out at the graduation ceremony. And you are capped with a certificate, a higher certificate in community development. And at that point, that won't be the end of your journey. It may only just be the beginning. Because then you're going to go on and you're going to do a degree in community development. And then you're going to go on and you're going to do an honors in community development. And you're going to study your master's and your PhD. And you're going to write books. And you're going to impact not only on your community, but you're going to impact on the world. Now that people might seem unrealizable as you're sitting here today. But this is the beginning. What a way to start. What a way to start. So you've got to see that end goal. 
You've got to see what happens at the end of the journey and what it is that you're doing to plow back. So I take my hats off to everybody who made this possible. I see you, Sawubona. Community Chess, the National Lottery, thank you very much. Without you, this would not have happened for a institution like Cornerstone, a small private higher education institution that's not for profit, that says we want to talk to people who is about what we about. And what are we about? We about service to others. We about human dignity. We about social justice. How do we bring that about? How do we make it happen? We don't make these things happen. They don't just fall from the sky. I want to talk to you very quickly about the notion of partnerships. It's all about working together. And not fake partnerships. We all know when we talk about relationships, they're partnerships. Okay? And sometimes they're fake. We're not talking about those kind of partnerships. We're talking about the genuine, authentic, real partnerships. And people, we are living a real partnership. Our partnership with you as students on this program is a real partnership. It's an authentic partnership. It's a genuine partnership. And I want to tell you here today that that sincerity in the relationship must underpin everything that you do, not only in relation to Cornerstone, not only in relation to community chest or in relation to the National Lottery, but in relation to each other. And in relation to yourself. What is it that you setting out to do? So without a resource base, and I say a resource base, which includes money, and it includes information, data, as you heard, which you hold, and other intellectual capacity that you bring, it in includes people, it includes material resources, it includes time. Without those resource bases, we're not going to make this happen. And we're already making it happen because we've made the investment of substantial resources, including being here today. So I want to say thank you very much for being here today. I want to especially thank Joan, Titania, and Yumna. I'll never forget that first day when you walked into Cornerstone's door and said, this is our idea, how do we make it happen? And I want to thank members of the Cornerstone team, especially Gordon, our acting head of sociology and community development, Stephen, who's leading our social enterprises, but most especially Janine Carlso, who stewarded the, the, the relationship, part, she, she attended to the partnership between Cornerstone and Community Chess in particular to make it happen. And what I'm really excited about, we're all on first name terms. Okay, so let's keep it that way, because we've become friends, haven't we? We've become friends and we've become a family. Okay. So, I want to leave you with this thought. It's an old African proverb. I really believe in it. I think I try my very best to live by it. And I'm asking you to think about taking it on board. Because on your own, yes, you do have to be an individual. But on your own, you can go far. You can go far on your own. But together, we can go further. Right? Thank you, everybody. I just wanted to say to Ms. Guniwe, you were wrong. You are a very good speaker. Please don't underestimate it. You are a very good speaker. Thank you so much for your inspirational words. Thank you for the call to the students to put up their hands. But when you make a call like saying to Mamina, it's actually a knock on the door of each of us that we all should do that. We all should be putting up our hands and saying, please send me. We can be the solution. There's a problem. Clearly, we have challenges in our country, but let us be part of that solution. You guys are well on your way to doing that. Thank you, Ms. Nguniwe. No wonderful words as always. Partnerships are, are everything. 
I mean, we are here today because of a partnership and a very powerful partnership between the National Lotteries Commission, between Cornerstone and between ourselves as Community Chest. And what you see today, it, it really gives me goosebumps. I don't know if the students really understand how, what a big deal this is, because this really is an amazing moment in time in community development in the future of our country, quite frankly. And it was made possible by partnerships. And to, to prove to everybody that the partnership between Community Chest and Cornerstone is not just the false ones you're talking about, it's not just the true ones you're talking about, it's the committed ones. We have a pledge, a formal pledge, and it's over here. This is a, this is a partnership pledge that has been compiled. And it's a partnership pledge that will be now, in front of everybody here present, signed by the CEOs of the various partner um, organizations. And it's a partnership for commitment to the process, that you are gonna be part of the journey with us, guys. You're not gonna be just about today, you're not gonna be just about the course, you are gonna be partners for life. So I'm going to read out what this says, and you're going to know what Lorenzo and Noel are going to be signing. So it's a partnership pledge between Cornerstone and Community Chest, and it reads, as partners that champion meaningful community transformation through formal education and development, we commit to promote, advocate, and actively impact the professionalization of community development towards becoming a fully recognized educational profession. That is the commitment in black and white. And I call up Noel and Lorenzo to please in front of you, for, in front of all here present, to sign this declaration of partnership. Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Lorenzo, for your commitment. The next order of business, the sending organizations a formal remark from Ms. Mbude from the YMCA Cape Town. Won't you please come up? Thank you. Can I have a show of hands who has undertaken economic study? Economic study, as part of a course, as a degree, as a, okay, as a subject, okay. So that is a good couple of hands. Now, can I have another show of hands? Who has undertaken the study of economics in grade five? I see some hands coming up. Okay. Thank you, um, Madam Director. Thank you to the Community Chest and to the wonderful partnership that is Cornerstone and the National Lotteries. The study of economics is about the production, the manufacturing, and the distribution of goods and services. Okay? 
We know that. One of the programs at YMCA is called TEEP, T-E-E-E-P, the Economics Entrepreneurial Education Program. We launched it in Cape Town, in the Western Cape, for the first time at a school in Site B. It's called Yomalela Primary School. Yomalela Primary School, as some of you will know, Site B is one of the most dangerous areas in the Western Cape. It was shacks which became formal housing, and the school has endured. So TIP is a continuous learning program from grade five to grade six to grade seven. It was quite interesting when we went to speak to the principals and to the principal and to the governing bodies trying to sell this program and they were very excited. They were not sure. And the class that they gave us was a special needs class. This young girls and boys, they knew that they're in a special class, yeah? We were very anxious because already we are working with special needs children. Our programs at the YMCA are run 100% by volunteers. So we launched last year, FANFEB, the kids were, uh, were quite excited, but they were quite anxious. So this year, in January, when schools reopened, I was one of the team that went to inspect and to say hello to the kids again. And so I went up and I asked the class, it's an afternoon program, by the way, it's not in the curriculum yet. We, our vision is that it becomes part of the curriculum. Because it not only teaches economics, it teaches decision making about consumption and about withholding consumption and about what is it the decision process before you go and buy. We have mock-up shops happening in the class. So one boy, everyone was excited putting up their hands and they want to give answers, so we were quite intrigued. So we hadn't, I hadn't seen the learner since we launched um, at Yomlela Primary. So this boy walked to the front of the class and confidently wrote, scarcity, and we looked, <laughs> really? Wow. And they were writing these concepts that they've learned. So I asked, please explain to us what scarcity, and he tried to explain, but got caught in the middle, and another young girl put up her hand and said something about, it's about resources and unlimited resources, the use of those words. The reason why I'm telling this story, Rene asked me, to send remarks to this wonderful occasion and to say what it means for organizations like the YMCA to have people, candidates, that have done this course and to the communities that we serve, okay? So for programs, TIP was initiated in Illinois in the US and the YMCA grabbed it and uh, we are launching it, we started launching it in the Western Cape, as I said, with TIP last year. So it means a lot in terms of the quality of the individuals that are going to drive programs like TIP. I can go on and say what the candidates, when they come back, are going to teach us in the modules for community development, in the leadership modules, in the uh, designing of skills assessment that is much needed, in monitoring and evaluation. I can go on and on about what they will bring back to our organizations and to our community. But I will just touch on three things that I think will endeavor. Besides TIP, we have a flagship program at POSMO. I was in POSMO this morning. We go there twice a week. We have a youth justice program called Reintegration of Young People that are about to come out back into society. They're again run by volunteers. These are the volunteers that we send to this program. 
We are very grateful to Cornerstone. We're very grateful to, to all the partnerships and to Community Chest. The modules that are going to be taught here, the professionalization of this course means a lot, not only to, to, to the Western Cape, globally. Because with such difficult beneficiaries and participants in our programs and the challenges that we're facing in our communities, this has been long coming. And I say well done to the partnerships. One of the first things that I think will bring, and my, my colleague who previously spoke before me said something about partnership, partnerships. It's going to mean a social or community transformation that is underpinned by interdependency, something that we need. Secondly, it will mean appropriate scale of our programs. Scale is very easy to do. You multiply it by 10 and you say you've reached scale. And also, lastly and most importantly, sustainable impact. That programs that all the sending organizations and ourselves continue to do every Monday to Friday. So with those three things, without going into the course material that I've had a look at, I say thank you very much. And I say well done to the people that have been chosen. You deserve it. It's going to be hard, but we're going to be there to help you, to guide you along. And with partnerships like Cornerstone and the Community Chest, you don't need to look very far. Mr. Lorenzo Davids, he doesn't know it yet, he's one of my mentors. He has championed you, he has challenged you to write. So the fourth thing that I think you'll bring to us is stories that are coming from you. Stories that are coming from the people. And it's not about data, because we are very easy to talk about the data, data analysis, and, and so, on, so on. Talking jargon that our participants don't understand, but we are the people that are doing it. So those stories, I also look forward to, to them, and I say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mrs. Mbude. Your words of encouragement, I'm pretty sure, will lay with students as they journey through the program. Thank you for giving us a little bit more academic perspective on the work as well, and how the academics affect real life, because that's what, the, what these students are, are about to do. They're about to change the world. So thank you very, very much for supporting that. Another remark from the ascending organization, I call on Ms. Susanna Farr from Gold Youth. Is she here? No, not here, okay. Okay, is there anybody, is there anybody else from Gold Youth here who may want to, to say, but you were, stu you one of the students, right? Was it the Gold Youth student? It's fine? Okay. We will then go on to the students then. The highest certificate student who will come up and um, speak and just give a, some remarks from a student perspective. Is that a... Your timing could not have been more perfect. How did you know that? Okay. Okay. No, no. I think, I think this is a lot more to do with a dramatic entrance. <laughs> Ms. Ford, you need to settle down first because you're actually next up on the program. What do you want to speak? Do you want to speak? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, can... Okay, let's just find out if she's ready. Are you comfortable to come up and say a few words? Or you want to settle down first? Okay. Can, you, can, you can use the moment now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Susanna Farr, Gold Youth. You are, no, no, you're just saying some remarks from the sending organization. Okay, point of view. all right. There we go. This is being put on the spot, but um, I think just to, this is not planned, but so what Gold Youth does is we work with young people in really hard hit communities. The worse 
the better for us because we know that there's potential to be harnessed. Um, and so part of our vision is really how do we change the narrative around this crisis at the base of the pyramid and realize it's our hope for Africa and it's our very hope for this country. And when young people are given the platform and the tools to realize they're valuable and realize their lives have purpose, something in them rises up and they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. So it's not rocket science what we do, but we're committed, we're long term, and we want to see communities flourishing, ground up. So our partnership with the commitment of both community chairs, but also what Cornerstone is doing to um, enable us to take young people and young adults and provide them with um, community development alongside what they're doing on the ground for us has just been amazing. So we're excited to be a part of this. We're hoping, and I'm being a little bit naughty, but we're hoping to work with Cornerstone to see how can we scale this. Because for us, um, I think our strength has been seeing young people that have were identified as the naughty ones and the ones that the, the parents and the educators don't want to, to be developed. And we know that they're leaders and they're entrepreneurial. And when we come alongside them, they become almost the best community development practitioners to actually plow back into their communities. And the strength is that they've come from those communities, but often w providing that academic support is, and filling in the gaps. And so for us, this is such an exciting program. So we're very grateful. We want to learn, and we hope that we can send more, but thank you. Um, and the three that are on this program know that they've got to go plow back, give back, share, multiply, it so that the investment is um, yeah, worth everyone's while. So thank you. Well, if you're going to make a dr dramatic entrance, you're going to have to have some substance behind it. And brilliantly done, Susanna. That was really, really well done. Thank you very much for the, for the encouragement. Sorry to have put you on the spot. And sorry you got lost. I'm sorry. OK, now it's over to our students. Um, the highest certificate student that's going to speak on behalf of the student, one, the first person, is Mr. Yanga Maniakanyaka. Uh, firstly, I would like to um, send my humble greetings to everyone in the room. Um, thank you very much, um, especially to you, Renee, for putting all of us in a pedestal today and making it all about us. Um, there's an African proverb um, that says, um, it takes a village to raise a child. All of us here um, in this room, I believe, um, are results of the vi a village um, that raised us. Um, we all uh, belong somewhere and we all want to belong um, somewhere at all times. And um, the work that we do most of the times um, can get overwhelming um, when we work in the communities that we work in um, and doing, um, having to do submission and, on, and all of that. And it is time, time like this um, where Really, um, it, 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 it's an opportunity for us to re reflect um, and to realize um, that it's more than, um, the work that we do is more than us. Um, we all form part of a global village. Again, I would like to say thank you to Community Chest and, and Cornerstone for entrusting us with this wonderful opportunities. Um, I just want to encourage my peers, um, my colleagues, uh, my classmates that are going to be in the, in the, in the program, that, that we already in the program with, um, by saying um, you have to keep in mind that all great things in life are waiting for you on top of a hill. The only thing, the only effort that you need to put in is to walk there. Uh, we all know walking uphill is not an easy task. Um, and it's okay when you're walking up the path to cry. But don't cry to quit. Cry moving forward. There's a saying by Dr. Martin Luther that goes like, that, that there's a saying by Dr. Martin Luther King that says, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but whatever you do, keep moving forward. <laughs> On my way here, um, 
uh, when I was walking here, I remembered a story um, that I once read um, about a um, young lady um, that was going through difficulties in her life. Um, she asked her father um, for, for, for an advice. Um, father silently walked her into the kitchen. Um, father boiled three pots of, of, of water. Um, on the first one, father put um, in potatoes. On the second one, the father puts in eggs. And then on the third one, the father put in um, coffee beans. Um, he waited for the pots to boil, of course. And then after a while, he asked her daughter, what do you see? Um, my daughter said, okay, I'm, I see the potato has softened up. I see that the egg, um, open the egg, um, crush the shells, the, the, the egg has hardened up, and then the coffee um, has um, turned, changed color, it has nice aroma. I'm a coffee addict, so that's <laughs> making me think of coffee now. Um, so she asked, what do you see? Um, so he had to explain to her, and she, uh, so this is, she said, um, the potato is softened up after um, not um, standing up in the water. And then the, the egg hardened up, as I said, and the coffee um, dissolved. Um, she said, you should be like this in life. You choose what you want to become like. The potato went into the water hard and strong but it came out soft. The egg was fragile on the inside, but it ended up being hard. The coffee changed the situation of the water to be brown. And um, you should choose how you want to be in your journey, colleagues, um, throughout this program. Thank you. Now I see the caliber of students we have on this course. Hmm? Thank you. I think what that beautiful, beautiful analogy at the end also speaks to us is that how the very same situation can change people differently and how we react to, this, to very similar situations and we all react differently. But it also speaks about be who you are. Be exactly who you are. Don't let your education necessarily change you. It will. But don't let it change the essence of who you are. Be who you are. Thank you, Yanka. Thank you very, very much. It was very beautiful. Thank you. I call on Ms. Latifa Jacobs, if she can also come up and give, give a little word of encouragement. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to my classmate for choosing me. I feel like this is actually a punishment. <laughs> And as Yanga was speaking, I was say I was actually thinking, speak longer, speak longer, talk longer, another ad, and but anyway, I'm here now, and um, I would like to say to everyone in the room, you are special. I like to say to our godmother, our Renee, <laughs> um, thank you for opening up a door. I like to say to Cornerstone for taking up the opportunity when, when community chess walked into. I would say this is a vehicle that started where the engineer put in an uh, effort in, and then you get the petrol, and then you get the driver. And we are the passengers. And I would like to add that, that the organizations that we are affiliated with, you play just such an important role for us. Because without you, I don't think there would be a road for us to drive on. And you know, I have such a lot of, I made such a lot of notes here. I listened to Lorenzo speaking and he said, he spoke <coughs> about the leap of faith. 2016, I took a leap of faith. I left the corporate world with my basic salary, and I took a leap of faith of taking up my studies. I decided that it's not about my family anymore. It's not about, 
I want to make a change, and the only way I could make a change is to study. And I went, and everyone said to me, open your own NGO, you are so good at organizing and everything. And I researched a little bit, and I thought, to, and what I've noticed is that we've got such a lot of NGOs, but we have got such a little support. A little, uh, there's very little people that feels that they need to collaborate with people. And what is so significant from, from Community Chess National Lottery and Cornerstone is that I see that connection, that desire that I have from all NGOs is that they collaborate with one another. Because if you look at the picture of collaboration, the hand-holding, it forms a foundation where no one falls through the cracks. And that is so important, especially in the journey that we, we're gonna do now within this 24 months. And I actually don't even see it just as 24 months. I'm looking beyond the 24 months already. Because I made a commitment to myself before my 50th birthday, I'll be writing Dr. Jacobs. I'm a mother of three children, three girls, very um, strong headed and very independent girls. And I'm a grandmother of one son. So my biggest fans is my daughters. And when I come home in, in the evening and I feel a little bit tired, then I always have this poster. And you know what? That is the ripple effect that I left my kids while I was working. Because in their lunchbox, I would put a little note when it's exam time. And it just shows that whatever you do today, it, that ripple effect continues. Whether no one turns around and pat you on your back and say, well done. I'm telling you, someone is watching you. I'm amazed at how many people I meet that that follows me on Facebook or wherever, and they would say, wow, I've been wanting to meet you, and then I think for myself, good Lord, what did I do now again? But you know what, it's, it, is, it is what you do in life has a ripple effect. And for my fellow colleagues, my, my classmates, we're gonna, we, we've already formed a family, a joint, we had our laughs in team building. We had the arena had us jumping up and down. I probably went to gym for the first time in a very long time. But yeah, to cut it short is that I'm looking forward to this collaboration with all of you, all of you. And I know we're gonna um, make everyone that worked very hard in getting us to where we are today, we're gonna make you proud. And I'm looking forward to in two years from now, um, welcoming the, maybe not even 30, but 60 class members to follow up to what we are doing. So uh, thank you once again. Mm, mm, mm. Latifa, if this is the way you get punished, I think they're going to punish you a lot more. You're an incredible speaker. Thank you so much for your message. And the beauty of what she said as well is the fact that while you are all on this course and you're making a difference in your lives, that ripple effect is so powerful. Because when you educate one person, particularly from communities that are more marginalized, you making a difference to your family, you making a difference to the extended family, you setting an example, you are going to be, you cl clearly are already an incredible example to your three girls. So I'll see you in a few years time, doctor. <laughs> Renee, godmother, program director, she's been called wonderful things today and clearly there's an affinity towards her. She's going to present a commissioning poem just before we close. So I call up Renee once again. Renee Mguenya.
We have started the journey. We we've had a whole day together where the registration happened and the registrar officially welcomed you. Then student services took you through a formal orientation and that was followed by two days of team building and deep connection. Um, and last week we, or the students, um, started with academic literacy. In fact, they completed a course on academic literacy. And this week they are busy with computer skills. In May, we are welcoming you back for the next two weeks, the teaching block, where you will then do introduction to sociology and introduction to community development. So your journey has started. Students, we will journey together with focused vision for development and for a just peace. Leave behind the shadow of your footprints so others can walk in your path. Society stand in awe of your commitment. Your loyalty is indeed appreciated, but leave behind the shadow of your footprints so others can follow in your path. The community salute your unreserved integrity. People admire your strength and clarity. So leave behind the shadow of your footprints so others can follow in your path. We respect your humility and your dignified approach. We share with you your courage unquestioned. But leave behind the shadow of your footprints so others can follow in your path. So let us witness and experience your professionalism your profound belief in uplifting the human spirit, then leave behind the shadow of your footprints so others can follow in your path. Thank you for who you are, dedicated community transformation leaders. But please, Leave behind the shadow of your footprints so others will continue to follow in your path. Absolutely powerful. Thank you very, very much, Renee. We're on first name terms. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, my, all that's left for me now really to do is say thank you. But before we actually break, I just want everybody, all the students to come to the front and um, have a photo, a group photo taken at the banners. I just want to say thank you very, very much to the National Lotteries Commission for, for supporting this partnership. A partnership can only be enacted, put into life, brought to life by people who believe in us. And thank you to the National Lotteries Commission for, for being here today and for believing in us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Noel, Rudy, Rene, the board. <laughs> Um, I wish you could sing for us, but I won't put you under pressure. Another time we will do that. But thank you very, very much for doing what you did. Thank you for answering our call. Because that was what we had an idea, you answered the call, you made it happen for us. 
Thank you. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you, Cornerstone. <laughs> Lorenzo Davids and Team Community Chest, always an honor to serve you, always an honor to be part of a journey as powerful as this one. Thank you very, very much, Community Chest. We also want to thank our service providers, everybody who's here today, Donnie, Jerome, our catering staff, Martin, and um, the media team that's going to be telling your story, because we're putting this out to the press, guys. Uh, Joan has already had an interview today on Smile. I don't know if anybody heard it, or they will, or it's not live, probably. There's going to be snippets of it, most probably in this evening's news. So your story is going out there. Thank you, Martin, for making it happen. Thank you, everybody, for making this um, possible for us. The organizing, sending organizations, thank you very, very much for your support. Thank you for what you do for us. Thank you for partnering with Community Chest and making a difference in our country. But mainly to the stars of our show, to the reason that we are here, the students, the students on the highest certificate in community development, thank you for you. Thank you for your authenticity. Thank you for your drive and your desire to be better. We are so very, very proud of you. We really, really believe in you. We will help. So Community Chess is there to help you. So if you need help, ask us. Ask your organizations. I know they've committed, they are committed to helping you. Ask them. Um, and it's going to be tough. Uh, somebody mentioned it. It's not going to be an easy road. But... There's a saying that goes, and my phone actually died because I actually had it here, but it goes something like this. It can get hard. It's supposed to be hard. Because if it weren't hard, anybody could do it, right? And it's meant to be hard, and because it's hard, that's what makes it great. Whenever you are doubting, whenever you feel like, oh, this is just a bit too much, maybe I've taken on too much, don't give up. Never Give up. Rest. Ask for help. But no quitting. Okay? It's supposed to be hard. That's what makes it great. I want you to go out there and I want you to be great. I want you to be good. To do well. To do really, really well in, what you do, in your studies. But I want you more than that to be good people. Go out there. Be great. And be good. We are with you all the way. Thank you very, very much.